Welcome to the Soulful Sound Podcast. This podcast is about celebrating the leaders, teachers, and coaches who guide fellow humans to connect, heal, and discover themselves so they can express their gifts into the world. I am Simone Niles, a coach, sound healer, vocalist, and author. Thank you for being here with me today. Always excited to jump on and welcome everyone to the Soulful Sound podcast. I am joined by the beautiful Natalie Monk, the founder of Kalo, who is on a mission to be a catalyst for change, opening hearts and minds through integration of modern science, ancient wisdom, and natural medicine centered around consciousness, love, and creativity. Hmm, yummy, 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 yummy. Now I have to say this one is super close to my heart because I have the honor of collaborating with Kalo from time to time and to celebrate this much needed vision. Welcome, welcome, Natalie. Thank you, Simone. Thank you for having me. Oh, uh, such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. So now, of course, I know all about Kalo, but I realized when um, you said, yes, I'd love to be on the podcast, that I don't really know as much about you and the vision behind it and everything as I'd like to. So what I want to know first, of, first and foremost is how did you get here today? What was your journey to become the founder of Kalo? Tell me a bit about that story. Um, thank you. Well, it was a, it's a life journey. It was a life journey. Um, it probably, I think Kalo, I've had many, many lives, but Kalo really started when I was in my twenties and I got, uh, sort of Epstein bar and they think limes and I was in bed for two years and I couldn't move. And then it's been a 20 year journey of an sort of a chronic autoimmune disorder that's sort of taken slowly one thing at a time and nine major operations. So I basically have had to go through the health system mm -hmm. and being a gypsy, I've lived in multiple places. And so I got to learn about the medical worlds in Canada and in America and in the UK. And in it, um, I very, like, it took a while to figure it out because you're just a patient and you're sick and you're constantly trying to look for answers and you can't find them and you're being ping pong from doctor to doctor and you're trying to put it all together. But I really understood maybe probably about 10 years ago, all of a sudden, maybe even longer now, mm -hmm. um, where there was really big gaps in the medical field and that the medical system doesn't really work for healing a lot of the ailments that we actually all have yeah. a lot of us are suffering from and so my journey now is i really one i was fortunate and was lucky that i was able to get the medical attention i needed when i needed it mm -hmm. i was able to see top doctors and i was also a natural seeker so i was naturally interested in being able to try and figure out what was going on and why was i so sick and why did i keep like landing myself like in bed or in the hospital um and so I want to fast track this because it took me 20 plus years and a lot of resources and yes. I learned a huge amount. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's that is an incredible story. Thank you for being so open about it. I think um, talking about illness and struggle and suffering in those ways is not really easy. And obviously you're here coming through that long journey. Um, I want to ask you just one small question based on what you were saying, being being in the health system, many different countries. What do you think was missing? Because there was something, you know, you said, yeah. yeah. What do you think was missing there for you? Well, um... I was looked after physically when my body broke and all of those things. But I think when you're dealing with an autoimmune or you're dealing with something now, I know a lot more at the time I was definitely, I was missing the soul bit. I was missing mm. the connection. I didn't feel like a, I didn't feel like a human in the system at all. I felt like a number. I felt like I put on my new hospital coat and I was thrown around. And so you end up feeling very like, disconnected not only from yourself because you're sick but then also disconnected from everything else mm -hmm. and having to manage so many different doctors and all that but I would say the ultimate thing was was that every time I stepped into the natural medicine side of things all of a sudden my health actually really improved and yeah. I was 
But what was wild was for whatever reason, every time I moved to a new country, the first person you could find, and I get a major health episode, you go straight to the GP or the hospital or whatnot. Mm. And I didn't have those resources. So I go back into the medical system. And then I was pumped with a lot of medication, was pumped right. with so many medications. And then with all the operations, and unfortunately, the medications just kept on making me sicker. Again, right. then in another country, I would go into the natural world scene eventually. So I don't know yes. why. It would always took me a little bit longer than it did to go <laughs> to the, into the medical system. And then when I went to the natural world, all of a sudden, it was a longer process, mm. but I actually was able to achieve true health. And then seeing this pattern reoccur three times. Yes. Um, all of a sudden, and then I actually went to a natural hospital in Switzerland. Mm. And I spent um, three weeks there because I was so at my wits end. And I just, I already, I had three kids and I was trying to work and I was trying to hold a family and the whole thing. And I honestly, I just didn't understand. And I knew so much about health, but I didn't understand why. So, mm. but I went to this naturopathic hospital, which was phenomenal. And I, something clicked and I decided that I needed to turn from being a patient into being a student. Mm, and I really profound, profound. had to be a student because I really realized that actually none of these people are going to heal me. Mm -hmm. I have to do the work. I, it's, yeah. I, only I know what's wrong with me. And it's only if I actually learn to trust my intuition, mm. am I going to really start figuring out what's going on? What's going on with my stomach when it starts going berserk? Yes. What is it? What's my connection yeah. to food? What's my connection to my emotional state? What's connection mm. to my heart state? Mm. So these were all the aspects the medical system didn't hold. They poo pooed yes. anytime I went into the natural medical system and the natural world system. And yet I would say once I went to that sort of naturopathic hospital, which is really intense. I mean, I had gum surgery on all four of my mm -hmm. molars with not one bit of anesthesia, with not one bit of anything. The only thing I was given, not one pain medicine, I was given tea tree oil. <laughs> wow. And I Fire is sticking out of my mouth. I was crying and I was just like, oh my God, I was in so much pain. But after that, and they were giving me tree barks and all kinds of different things. Mm. After that, I have never been so healthy in my life and I haven't touched one more. I don't touch anything that's pharmaceutical anymore. Do you feel called to use your voice and sound in a healing capacity? Learn how to use your voice therapeutically to facilitate healing and well being. Whether you want to go deeper in your own healing journey, or facilitate others in theirs, this training is for you. This online training runs over five weekends and offers theory, practice, resources, and support on your path to becoming a qualified sound healer and for your personal healing journey. No medications, no nothing, no not natural hair products, natural nail products, natural deodorants, everything. Natural, everything. Yes. Yes, yeah. so it's, it's been that's beautiful. Well, there are two beautiful nuggets there. The one that you said what which which struck a chord is you moved from be from being a patient to becoming a student. And I think often that is really comes around to understanding that we are responsible for our own health and well being that, you know, we have an innate self healing system that even though we can have support on the outside, that is definitely an in, inward looking and inward journey. Um, and then the second is uh, you mentioned when you were sick, not only feeling disconnected from everyone outside in, in the medical system, but also disconnected from yourself. And that for me is really profound as well, because often we don't realize that we are that it's actually coming back to ourselves and reconnecting with ourselves where the healing starts or definitely part of the healing process. So I just wanted to reflect that back because I think it's beautiful and, and not something small. So I wanted to reiterate those two two points. So I guess the question now for, for me, based on that amazing story and how you framed it is what is well, why is the mission of healing so important to you? I think because you said something, you reflected something back to me that's so important um, because I have discovered and really understand that actually, I think I very much tend towards the Gabor Mate philosophy mm. and way of thinking, which actually most physical illnesses come from an emotional situation known as trauma, whether we want to call it trauma, it doesn't necessarily have to be super traumatic or whatnot, but exactly. it is the moment that you separate from your body. So even though I realized later on that, oh, like I feel so disconnected to all these people and I'm disconnected from my body, 
I had separated from my body mm-hmm. way earlier. <laughs> and that was the problem. And so, you know, and healing is actually reclaiming and owning and loving mm-hmm. all the different parts of yourself. And, but it takes, it takes, you go, we don't know that. Yes. <laughs> and more, it's really tough to do. Like one of the most hardest things to do is actually to love ourselves, to accept mm-hmm. ourselves, to cherish ourselves and to cherish our difficulties and our imperfections and all of these things. But that's actually where the medicine is, yes. not in the pill popping or the, you know, whatever else we're doing. The medicine is actually figuring out, wait, where am I disconnected from myself? Where am I not cherishing and loving mm-hmm. myself? And we've mm-hmm. turned, why we have such a toxic, sick culture where like everyone I know, I'm getting calls all the time mm-hmm. from 20 year olds who are really sick. And I'm just going, and it's more, I was the youngest. I was, I, they actually, my, my naturopathic doctor when I was 24 was writing a, a book and he actually used me as one of the case studies. Mm-hmm. And he used me as one of the case studies because at that moment I was his youngest patient and, but I healed also the quickest in two years. I, he was able to get me around. Um, he ended up going to jail because unfortunately pharma potentially someone came and put him into a lawsuit and said that he was charging his patients too much but he was the only one doing the work that he was doing Mm -hmm. and he was dealing with and it was all he was doing was giving you massive vitamin injections like I looked like an HIV person I went every other day to get these vitamin injections so I just I have learned so much and that was the Mm -hmm. beginning that really yes. what we need to do is we need to reclaim all these different parts of ourselves. We need to love ourselves mm-hmm. and we need to own yeah. a bit of ourselves. Yes. And it's like, yeah, so it's, it's a, it's a journey. Oh, of course. I have to admit, I actually now, and this is again, why I started Kalo, because I actually really, really understand so much. The healing journey is actually the gateway to self-discovery. So Mm. it's actually really beautiful and really fun. Only when you have something so hardcore, shitty happen to you, are you forced to go and have to look at things differently? Are you forced to go and actually question what's going on in my life? And these are, I call them rites of passages. You know, it's like whether you get really sick and you get diagnosed with something really serious or you're going through a major divorce that's really horrible or someone in your family dies or someone really close to you dies. These are yes. moments where they're actually really beautiful moments. We learn in moments when things are tough and sad. Mm. We don't learn in moments when everything is, yeah, amazing and i'm winning this that that, no we learn through the challenges so there are Mm -hmm. opportunities to be able to really go through this journey of self-discovery which i think that's our only purpose in life right yeah yeah yeah. the more you learn about yourself and the more you understand how you work and the more you can appreciate the beauty and the interconnectivity of you with the with the universe and you realize that you are bigger than yourself and your ego all of a sudden things, your perspective changes and things get really exciting. And I literally yes. life gets exciting. You're, you're, yes. yeah. So that's my goal. That's what I, I would love everyone to be able to experience that and feel mm-hmm. it because I think it is so achievable. Yeah. I think it's yeah. so in everyone's wheelhouse and everyone deserves it. And I just don't see other places that are focusing on this. I yes. don't, I don't see anywhere that's focusing on it, which is why the urgency of where I was like, wait a second, we need, need to, to do this. this. Yes. Yeah. Like we're yeah. not, we're not even like, w- even though we deal with healing and health, we don't do it in the typical way. We're not, we don't do it in the boring, you're sick. I'm a victim. I'm mm-hmm. going to be sick for life and let's take medications and my life's over. No, no, no. The minute we, we get you and you're one of these beautiful facilitators who helps with us, it's more like, okay, no, let's change your perspective. Let's help mm-hmm. you get out of, because our mind controls so much today. Right. Our job is to, our mind is so negative when left in its own devices. It just wants to cut you up. Mm-hmm. Go to like, I'm not good enough. That sucked. Or like, oh my God, how did I do that? <laughs> like, oh my God, I'm going to fall apart. Like it just takes you. So our job is to cut off the mind, like mm-hmm. literally re-bypass, rewire the mind. Yes. So that we can fall into our body, which has so much innate intelligence. 
I love that. I love that. And a lot of the work I do around sound healing is really that bringing people back to their truest essence. And that is peeling all those layers and of conditioning and of all the things that we know aren't necessarily serving us anymore, peeling it all back. And as you said, coming back to body, but also recognizing that at our truest essence, there is a beautiful frequency or composition or song that our soul sings. And when we are in harmony with that it's such a beautiful beautiful expression um and you know i'm really listening to you and i feel i talk about this in my work because i'm very fortunate to have grown up in a family where my mom used to own a, a bookstore when i was in primary school called metaphysical books so i grew up reading deepak chopra louise hay and things like that after school when i was like 10 and 11. and this whole understanding as you mentioned that physical illness is um, is often, you know, as a result of other things, right? It's often that the physical body is the last point of the, the soul going, hey, I've been trying to get your attention. This is not happening, but you're not hearing me at this level. So let me come manifest into the physical body where you'll wake up and pay attention. And I notice with my kids, my siblings, my parents, the moment any of us is ill, the question is, OK, what's going on within me that's rep being represented in a physical way? And it's so profound when you think about it from that with with that um, perspective, I find, because it immediately says I am responsible for my own well-being, healing and, and, and all of that, which is super important because you mentioned the word victim. And very often um, people go into a victim mindset and there is a difference between a victimization experience and then a victim mindset where we choose to go into poor me, I can't. This is this is how life has to be and and you know feel that way not not to judge people in that space but to know that that's very often where people go but you don't need to remain there it's mm. just realizing what else is possible um and i i really want to ask you one more question on healing because you've touched again on some really interesting things and i like to ask my guests this one because this is a big part of the work i'm doing what is your definition of healing My definition of healing, it, it is about um, reclaiming and aligning with all parts of yourself. It's really like owning all of the, knowing that the stories, whether they can, you can let them go and there's all kinds of, you can let them go, but also know that that actually was a magical part of you and it's okay. Like yes. even the shitty stories, like even the stories that you really let probably made you sick in the first place. Yeah. They also yeah. gave you the strength. They gave you the grit. They gave you like, there were so many, I've been able, because I'm in the work that I do, I have been able to really track sort of what happened to me and why mm. I got so sick. And so yeah. many times talking about the victim side, I mean, I was totally for many years in victimhood, 24. I was, you know, I was working really hard. I was flying at my work. I was playing hard. I was having fun. You're like, I'm like, I was a competitive skier. I was just like, I had all these things. And I was like, I was living life to the fullest. Then all of a sudden I get slapped down. I'm fully in bed and I'm really mm -hmm. struggling and it keeps going. And then people don't know what you've got. And then it's like this whole thing. But then it lasted for years. I mean, yeah. honestly, it lasted for years and it never it didn't stop. And I just was like, oh my God, when it came to like the fourth operation, the third operation, the, even the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth operation, I'm literally going Gosh. to me, like, excuse me, like what's going on? And I used to be the most physical being. I used to be a competitive skier. And like, why mm. am I falling apart? And I'm, I'm not that, like, I, I also did have still a positive mindset. So I was kind of like, but, but there was so much junk from my childhood that I had to unpack. And I, yeah. you know, and that was part of it. And there was just a lot I had to learn that I just, mm -hmm. so again, just being able to fast track that. So I think yeah. it's just being able to bring all of your stuff. And my goal is like, I really believe it. Like, and music is so important to me. So I love your work. And I also love your whole being as that's why we have you. Okay, like, I love you. <laughs> um, is, uh, is, you know, what's so amazing about music is that it bypasses the brain and we all can mm. feel the beat. You know, even if, even people who are deaf, you know, yes. if you see code on one, they can feel uh, like if you get them to feel like the bump of a thing, like you can yes. feel a beat and you know, the Schumann resonance, which is the beat of the earth, that's our state of being. And mm. that's actually 
everything. We just need to get back to that state of yes. our natural state of being, which we have been so ripped away from. Mm. So a lot of ways, I could also say that healing is about getting back to that, mm. you know, that really that central resonance yes. that the earth holds where our central nervous system feels safe where everything can stop being in fight and flight mode and where we can also just be fully aware and present in our being absolutely and then and even with sound and beat and resonance as you say even when it's not audible to the human air, there is still vibration and frequency and resonance. So sometimes we think we need to hear something for it to be impactful. And this is often when in, in sound healing, for example, and this I think goes for music or meditation or any of the things that we do, the importance of silence. So after sounding and you've created all of these amazing frequencies, a lot of the healing and integration actually happens in the silence because the vibration is still doing the work. It's so, it's so beautiful, um, this, this kind of work and I would be curious about your sources of inspiration because obviously you spoke about your personal story and how you went through your own healing journey and I'm sure continue to do that but what are your source some of the sources of inspiration for you um I would say that my number one source of inspiration by far is nature I, I just I honestly don't think I could get anything more it is divine intelligence Mm. Um, it's what's created the universe it's created it's beyond our comprehension which I yes. love so yes, it's yes, beyond yes. you know we think everything has to be mapped out by science who are you kidding I'm sorry yeah. so we're not brilliant enough to map out <laughs> what's going on in the world and there's really brilliant intelligent stuff going on beyond us and then yes you've got the universe and then you also have us our bodies are we are so capable to if left to its own devices and being given the right tools and the nourishment, the fact that our body can heal itself so well, yes, phenomenal. Yes. yes. So nature, and then the other thing about nature is also um, nature is not only for its intelligence, but also for its, I think it's probably its, its vibration, just going yes. back to, you know, whenever, if I ever feel out of whack or anything, I, I started this as a kid, I did not grow up like you did with um, parents who were into anything spiritual. I didn't even know the word spirituality until I was 22. So I was like <laughs> completely in the dark about this world. And, but so, but every time I went into nature, it also saved me. Like I had a lot of difficulties when I was younger. And when I had the difficulties, nature is always accessible to anyone yes whether you're a kid whether you don't have money whether you don't have to, i mean the key is just to really go and look for it and yes. submerse yourself in it and recognize that the wind the air the water the rain the the yes. grass it's going to hold you and mm -hmm. it sees you and it loves you for everything that you are yes so that is i would say that's my primary inspiration and yes. then I love, um, I also believe in, um, I think the creativity of the human spirit. Mm. Yeah, I think that the power that we are, we can manifest things and we can make things. And I'm a really big believer that everyone is creative. Even the people who don't think they are creative, they are creative. Yes. Yes, we are, exactly. And what we do as humans is we come on this earth and we create, we mm -hmm. procreate babies, we make things. The whole <laughs> yes. thing, all we're doing is creating. We create thoughts, we make things. So I'm just like, we're so creative and the power of that. And so I really enjoy any form of creativity and being allowed to let that out and that expression. So mm. of course, I also love the arts and mm -hmm. music and dance and yeah, so human creativity. Those are yeah, my I love that. And I completely relate to all of it. And, and I would go to nature first, too. Interestingly, I always say I have this love affair with nature. And 
you know, choose to go out in all sorts of weather just to be immerse myself in that and take a lot of like forest bathing and just smelling the trees and all of the stuff you're talking about with the elements, my body just lit up with the, the sensations of what that's like. And I, and I did grow up and I have very vivid memories of coming home. I speak about this in some of the stories that I tell, but coming home again from primary school and climbing a tree in my garden and lying back and feeling the branch of this tree holding me and singing and seeing above the ground and seeing the wave, hearing the waves in the distance because I wasn't too far from the shore. I mean, incredible. And it became a ritual. I had no idea the profound impact it was having at the time. Now I can reflect and understand how much, how important it was for me to do that. Um, and you mention about not necessarily having these things from your parents or when you were younger. And I obviously am so fortunate to have met, met your beautiful family. I would wonder in now as a mother, you're in a state of knowing so much more. What is one thing that you feel you want to kind of um, really leave uh, or give leave a legacy for your children? Like what is one thing that you want to teach them now that you think if I had this when I was young, this would have impacted me in this way? What could that be? I'm sure there are many things, but what springs to mind that's of importance to you for your children right now? That they are perfect in the like in the entirety that they are right now yes. they're yes. totally perfect they don't need me to be conditioning them they don't need me to be molding them they actually i i have three kids um and always i i listen to them because mm. they're connected in a way that we're not yes and they have an understanding and intelligence about themselves mm -hmm. and if i can give them anything is to allow them to self-regulate and to be able to know Definitely. that they don't need anything else but themselves and to know that they are their beauty, their pure beauty. Because in the world today, it's so tough being a kid. Yes. It's so tough. It's, yes. it's tough being an adult, so yes. let alone being a kid. You come in and it's like, all you're doing is getting like, every, the whole world is about judgment, everything, mm. everything, mm -hmm. there's no acceptance. Mm. And then, the schooling system or whatever you are, you're never good enough. We're all trying to over condition our kids, over cuddle our kids. Like yes. on every level, we're screwing up our kids. We honestly are. So <laughs> don't get me going on the subject. I can, I can go, but I, I trust me. I can too. I get it. <laughs> I have so much. Um, I actually really believe in them a lot. And I yes. have, I almost believe in them more than sometimes what, because I think we have, unfortunately, we have trauma, we have old stories, we have, so there's a purity in their spirit and their being that if guided in the right way, mm. they have what they need. We, unfortunately, I feel like got hit down and turned into something that we're not. And so for me, I just don't wanna condition my kids too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's it's for me, often the role is unconditioning because in the world when they're not around you, of course, you're constantly fighting that. I, mean, I had my youngest um, son who's now 16, but he was homeschooled for the latter part of education because I realized that his expression and his way of being in the school system was being shut down. And I felt like I was constantly building him back up for it to be pulled away again, building back up. And I have to say, and I've always said, Said this that teachers are people too people with issues and traumas and challenges and everything and while i take my role and responsibility as a teacher myself um, incredibly important we have to realize that this is just how this, the system is now you have a choice what you do when they're not in the system or to take them out of it and which is what i ended up doing with my youngest who wasn't thriving in that setting so i completely agree and relate to that you are perfect just as you are with all your imperfections and flaws and all the things that we all have um, and i think that is beautiful Simone, just to, go, just to go on that, because I think it's actually really quite important. So I also, three kids, my oldest is severely dyslexic, like I am, mm. um, didn't fit in the system. Actually, there was like literally no school for him to go to. Right. Um, that's really interesting. You know, you're in London and the whole thing. And we actually had a tough time trying to figure out a place that he couldn't speak. Right. And on top of it, he was severely dyslexic. Then my daughter also is missing a chromosome. It's not Down syndrome. It's a very rare syndrome. So okay. I had two, my two first kids had, you know, things where they didn't fit into the mold. Right. And so it meant that 
I had to really listen to them and follow up. My whole goal was like, okay, so how do I keep them knowing that they're magical? How do I let them lean into what makes them thrive? Because yes, if I lean into what makes them thrive, they're going to figure it out. Yes. And I'm, I'm so proud of my 16 year old son mm. who is like a vegan chef who has already been working in central London in a kitchen. Amazing. And, does, and he wants to save the world through his veganism. Okay. So he's not going to be a scholar and an academic and he's definitely probably not going to go to university it doesn't matter but the key no. is look at your kid for everything that they are because there's so much yumminess and magical in them be let them be who they are don't let yes. them be who they think they need to be yes 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 that mold that very often we're like you got to fit this and this and that i i've been very much the rebel parent and the rebel person in that way too so i can sense the kindred spirit right here i i'm sure and talking about connection because i think connection and intuition are a really big part of the you know the work that you do the work that we do um and i mean we met very randomly in this beautiful place in Turkey some time ago, and there was an immediate connection there. And when you were telling me about the work you're doing, it was a massive intuitive yes in my body. And it was just so easy, so much ease and flow in the follow through and how everything kind of kicked off. And I don't take those things lightly because it's not always, it doesn't always happen, right? Um, tell me about what your thoughts are about that, the connection and the intuitive part of the work that we do, because it isn't, you know, as we said, it's not just head stuff, right? We're going into another space, whether it's heart or energy or whatever. Talk to me a bit about connection and intuitive intuition. Well, I just want to comment on, that's such a beautiful thing that you brought up because mm. so it doesn't always happen at all. It's discernment, no. right? It's our ability to be so connected to ourselves that yes. we are we are able to know when to trust something. And I am very connected to myself mm. and I operate funny enough actually through having such a very open heart mm -hmm. but also being incredibly intuitive and I don't click with someone that quick because I'm actually really um I'm really picky about teachers because you were talking about teachers before and I think yes. that teachers and guides that I like to call them teachers guides I don't like the word guru um teachers yeah. and guides have a really phenomenal place in society like and they're the most important people and things that can help us get mm. from a to b and whatnot so um i so i personally actually the way i operate and there's this thing called um human design mm -hmm. which is quite fun and yes. you can just do it for fun i i, I experimented all these different things because it's part of my research and it's part yes. of understanding and then i basically do it on every one of my family yep. when, <laughs> when I'm like, then i'm like Questioning, I'm testing it. Is this really accurate? Like, I'm a skeptic at first. You got to prove it, you know? So I'm like, I do. And then I'm like, I saw in my human design that literally I operate from my heart and from my intuition. Yes. And I was like, that is so right. Yes. Because it is. And I think that comes down to, again, I actually really love this is a quote that Gabor said in one of his talks. And I don't even think he really, I don't know if you, he hasn't necessarily written about it, at least I haven't seen it. But when you align, with your heart and your gut and your mind, that's when true wisdom comes. Mm. And there's an alignment there and it allows you then to really operate. Like I operate from such a place for me mm. of knowingness, from yes. my knowingness. And so, you know, I meditate, so I do all these things. So like, you know, but so I have a, like, I have a good practice, but I'm also, I have three kids and I work full time and I don't, yeah. I don't do it all the time too. So it's like, but yeah. I, 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 I know the purity of, I know the purity and the brilliance of my knowingness. And so, mm -hmm. which allows me then when I'm in a situation to operate very fast and very clear and I throw seeds. So mm -hmm. I threw a seed at you. Yes. So I threw a seed at you. And the question is, are you interested in the seed or not? And if you're interested yes. in the seed, fantastic. And then if you're interested in interweaving, fantastic. We have an amazing tree. If yes. you're not, the seed just gets left and it's totally fine. But I'm going to put it up. I, lo I love throwing seeds. And Me then, too. and I love seeing what happens and interweaves. And the ones that are the easiest, that are so natural, mm -hmm. are the best. Yes. yes. <laughs> you get yes. this because we're just so naturally on the same page we're naturally aligned so it made you coming on Kalo so easy had, so easy I mean I hardly even speak to you I'm like yeah yeah <laughs> give it the range just this just that, that, that. I mean it's ridiculous 
But I would say I operate like that with the majority of my practitioners who I really like. I don't, because we all operate from the same vibration and we all operate from, I think that we have all come to a point in our being where we are really connected to our knowingness. And there's, mm. and so there's a deep well of intelligence, wisdom, yumminess that mm. can be spread. And that's what I'm interested in spreading is that yeah. it does, to me, it's not intellectual. I'm not intellectual. I'm like a total <laughs> dyslexic, almost, you know, funked out of all my schools, can hardly speak English. I'm like the last person I like, you know, <laughs> don't be speaking things because I can hardly speak. But it is, it's, for me, it's, it's not about the, academic transmission or the trend like to be yeah. to give to someone it's about actually the um the open-heartedness and the mm -hmm. wisdom yeah it's it's heart and wisdom to yeah. me that it's and wisdom That's is beautiful. not intelligence so yeah yeah, yeah. that is amazing I'm intuition love it <laughs> same 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 now i know that with Kayla, well, actually, I know. So I'll ask you so that anyone listening can have an idea. What are some of the practices and some of the different things that people can find in Kalo? Because obviously, you know, I'm a part of it. So anyone who knows my work will know the sound aspect. Talk to me a little bit about the variety of things that you can find in Kalo. Yeah, so I think um, the most important thing about Kalo to know is that we're young. Yes. <laughs> We've got a very big mission and um, we've got a very, like we, we can see and we know where we want to go, but we're a startup. Yep. Um, but what we really focus on is we focus on these journeys, which will allow people, because I think one of the biggest struggles today is that so many people really are not happy and they're not, they're struggling to survive let alone thrive. So yes, yes. our mission is really to try and get you into the place of like, let's thrive. Like, oh my God, don't waste time. Even if you're sick, mm -hmm. let's thrive in being sick. Because if you can thrive, that's going to heal you quicker. Yes. So our job is the biggest problem today is that there is so much content out in the world. It's really daunting. Um, people don't know who to trust. It's unvetted. There's a lot of charlatans. And the fact you don't actually know where to start yes and so yes. what we wanted to do was we wanted to put very focused journeys together towards a specific goal mm -hmm. so it allows us to create and we're going to end up creating tons of journeys that's our you know that's yes. what we're going to be doing we're creating tons of journeys because we create tons of journeys where we bring in the top expert that we think it doesn't mean mm -hmm. the top expert who has the largest following on instagram of course These are top experts who are really they Doing really, and I'm not, I'm not belittling those guys either because they've totally done the Joe Spencer is amazing. I'm not like, <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying what's our practitioners are really focused on healing and helping mm -hmm. people. So they're not spending their time on social media and getting out in the world at all. Mm. They're focused on, they love helping people. So yes. we find the top and the best practitioners or doctors or thought leaders or whatever mm. it is that we think sh shamans, um, medicine women. And we mm -hmm. bring whatever we think we need to bring in and we put it in a proper sequence yes. that we know that we need to put you through to be able to get to sort of one level and then you can yes. go to another level and you can go to another level. And it's all towards self-healing, everything. Cause mm -hmm. in the end, that's what I believe in. Even though yes. I, some people get, ah, I don't want to be healed and I don't need to be healed, but we all yes. do. Like we yes. all have something. Okay. Yes. Right, it's right? it's a journey and it's, it, there's, there's no yes. destination other than back as you said, self-discovery here. So just keep discovering. <laughs> and for me, healing is let's just get rid of the shit that we don't want anymore in our lives. That's yes. it. Let's get yes. rid of it. So yes. our job is, and all of our practitioners know how to help you to do that. Yes. But they're experts in the various areas. So we have the Kalo method and the mm -hmm. Kalo method is a really sort of well understood method of how the human works to be able to slowly peel the onions mm -hmm. and open mm -hmm. the heart so that you can finally be more aligned and so we can empower you to be more aligned to who you are yes. so that you don't because I think in our society we expect the doctors I think I said it, we expect yeah. the doctors to to heal us mm -hmm. it's only through us we have so it's just about so we get these tools we work through tools we work through experiences we do journaling we do compassion inquiry we put all the top stuff from literally all over the world mm -hmm. and we bring it together in these beautiful packages 
That's amazing. Yes. So, and we mix modalities. Like if you're talking about modalities that we're mixing, we mix everything from, as I say, like, okay, so some of the journeys that we're doing, um, we have awaken the feminine, right? Mm -hmm. Because right now, actually, there's a lot of women who need, who need help to find their voice, who don't know um, how to put boundaries and don't even know what their relationship is towards boundaries, yes. um, who are dealing with hormone issues. So we have a menopause uh, journey, which is where, you know, that's a major shift in people's lives. Yes. And normally it can lead to a lot of depression and confusion. And you feel like you've lost your whole life and you feel like you should be like, ah, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, yep. I'm useless. No. No. It's one of the most powerful moments in our lives. So let's honor that and yes. let's change your thinking around it. But let's also give you the medical understanding, the yes. scientific understanding. So you understand medically what's happening to your body. Yes. Then you understand how you can properly help it through all these different modalities. Mm. And, and it's a chance for someone who's very new to this to be able to one, hear from different gift givers, mm -hmm. because not everyone clicks to everyone not everyone clicks to the same gift givers yes some people are more heady and they need the sort of more intellectual scientific one someone sure. needs the more energetic one so this gives you a chance to hear from different types of gift givers mm -hmm. and then to be able to try things that you would never have thought of trying yes and and to hear things that you would never have thought of hearing and so what's beautiful is literally from step one i think they people get opened up to things mm -hmm. that they haven't thought about at all and we're just, we keep throwing them gifts, gifts, yes. gifts, gifts to help them change their perspective, to help them change the way that they're orbiting around their lives. And um, yeah, yeah the other ones that we do is a menopause. We've got a whole new approach to fertility, which I'm really excited about because fertility, and this is preparing people for IVF or preparing people to have children. But a lot of times today, again, in our society, we have more people struggling to get pregnant mm -hmm. than any other time. And it's yeah. because of the amount of stress we're under. So ultimately, actually, yes. all of these things come from stress, right? Yes. All of our ailments come from stress. Even the judgment that we feel in ourselves causes stress. And so then that starts debilitating. And so whether you're dealing with cancer or whether you're dealing with finding your feminine self, whether yes. you're, <laughs> menopause, it's all, it's, unfortunately, it's all stress. Yeah. So we put, we give you again, the scientific understanding of how to diffuse the stress, like understand what's going on, diffuse the stress, and then to be able to give you really practical tools yes. that you can take home and do so that you are, you can just keep debunking that stress every single time you can. And yes. then for example, fertility one, we then help you cultivate how you can have a little bit more magic in the bedroom. Cause just say mm -hmm. for fertility, you all of a sudden you end up feeling like a, when you go through difficulties, you end up actually feeling again, reduced to an object. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. When you get reduced to an object, you it's very hard to get back your sensuality. Mm -hmm. But what makes you be able to get pregnant is that orgasmic state that yeah. you get, to, which only comes when you can really relax. Yes. And you can have fun back in the bedroom. And that seems like such a far off thought, but it's actually. No, not is, at all. No. It's <laughs> the essence. It's the, you hear it all the time. How many people get pregnant? Um, you know, right after they've been trying for many, many years on IVF and the whole thing. And then once they forget about it and they're just living, oh, whoops, I can't believe it. I got pregnant. That's it. Yeah. Because well, I like the, the use. I like, I love the, the use of the word magic there, because for me, often when I am even in, in general, but let's say um, on, a, on the Kalo platform, I, I really see it as, yes, the support, yes, the knowledge and understanding and the tools, but also just creating a space for magic. And when we create that space for magic, people light up in such a beautiful way. It's such an honor to witness it. Um, and then that is also rippled out and filtered out into their lives in ways that they don't yet necessarily even know. Um, and that's that's beautiful. So the word magic is really potent for me in that setting completely, completely. And of course, again, okay, go on. You wanted to say something no, before. No, I was going to say, no, because thank you for bringing that up. Because I yes. think this is where we're so unique and different is that it, these actually, all the journeys are actually really fun. And so there there's magic, but there's also playfulness. And there's like, it's all that kind of, cause that's actually what we need to bring in. And yeah. that's goes back to our defined yeah. playfulness is a good one too. 
Mm. It's, it's, our, it's, a, it's the divine feminine. It has nothing to do with, you know, that's a whole other conversation. We won't yes. get into <laughs> Oh, we can have plenty. That's fine. I'm loving this one. <laughs> totally. I mean, like, I, but the divine feminine, you know, it's about losing our ego. It's about being connected to ourselves. It's about nurturing. It's about mm -hmm. love. And also, I think a couple of other things that we always bring in is we bring in ritual. Mm -hmm. We bring in sacredness. Yes. To remember that every moment in our life is actually really sacred. So you could decide to, I'm just going to drink this kombucha. <laughs> I'm just going to drink it because I want to drink some kombucha and just drink it. Or you can be like, oh my God, I absolutely love this kombucha. And like, you can have a whole different relationship to like, thank you for this yummy kombucha that's going to go in. And you can, I can connect to the bubbles and the whatever it tastes like. Very you know? sensual experience. Yeah, and yeah. everything can turn into that. And so I think we've seen when so many people be able to have that all sense like, oh, wow. Like yeah. I forgot. It's just about remembering. It's helping us to remember these things. The mm -hmm. other big thing that we do is our journeys that are online, our journeys online are with a community of like-minded seekers mm -hmm. who are also there because of a reason, you know, whether yes. it's the menopausal or whether there's going to be a gut brain, mm -hmm. um, gut brain, uh, oh my gosh, I'm like totally, what is it? Gut, uh, brain, heart. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> During, right? And, or there's also, we've got a pleasure and intimacy one, which is excellent because that's actually mm. the base of everything we need mm. but um is you know when we do this work we're doing it with a community of people who are looking for the same things and people start at the beginning and they're a little bit shy and some of them try to turn off their cameras and the whole thing <laughs> if you can don't turn off your cameras because what's so beautiful is you end up creating a community of people yes. where mm. you start realizing that actually we're here to learn from each other because yes. There's so much to share and to learn from each other. We're, so the community aspect, I think, of what we're creating is so beautiful yeah. and so potent. And as I say at the beginning, it's tough for some of the seekers to of understand. Course, yes. They get a little bit nervous. And our you know, guides help them to say, no, 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 as you know. Yes. Uh, so please, we, we welcome you to speak. Because also, it's really important for people to be heard. Oh, yeah, yeah. And That's community awesome. offers people an opportunity to know they're not alone on this journey. It's very, it's very beautiful. And I, and I love when that happens. So I think that's amazing. Now I know there are a lot of modalities, a lot of things, there is a huge mission and there's a huge vision. So this might be a question that is like, how do I choose? But I want to ask you if you could wave a magic wand and make one change in the world right now, just one change, what would it be? Mm, I want to, I want to free our souls to dance because I believe that if we're in alignment, so I do believe in souls. I think that I, I, I think that we have gotten, um, so technical with life. And again, that's our connection to, to nature. And I just think there's something bigger than ourselves inside mm. of ourselves. And I think if we can, let go of all of our shit and understand that our challenges are actually there to service us. Mm. And I think that, you know, and we can allow our souls to be able to dance in our being. I think that's ultimate freedom. And I think that's where, I mean, I, I'm a, I like dancing and I believe actually everyone, everyone should I love dancing. It. Yes. <laughs> and it's about allowing our bodies to be free. Mm. And it's not dancing in a, I got to do, I'm so dyslexic. I've never been able to do a dance class, but it's about just being able to be, feel my body in mm. space with, with a beat that's beyond me. And so I don't even need music. Like I just, but just, and it's just about being able to feel and be in one's body in movement. And I just think if our souls could release all the baggage so that it doesn't feel so weighed down and it feels free to be everything it's supposed to be in its magnificence, that's what I want. So I want people to know that they honestly, truly are phenomenal. Everyone, even the ones who've done wrong, even the beautiful beings who are in prison for life. And I went to, I have been to the, the Angola prison and the whole thing. So I'm like, I've spent time, you know, even these beautiful souls who have gone through so much difficult, they are beautiful. Yes. And they are perfect in their being. They might have done something wrong, but they are 
that was part of their story. It was part of their journey. And they always have an opportunity to connect with their magnificence and the divine of who they are. So I just want people, and they need help to do it because it's not yes. easy. To do. But I yeah. want people to connect to their magnificence because it's inside them. It's inside right. them. We're waving that wand right now, totally. connecting with our magnificence. I love that. Mm-hmm. Natalie, where can people find you, Kalo, online? Um, they can find us best place, uh, kalolife.com. Okay, great. And obviously I will be putting all the links and everything to make sure that they can find you in all the, the best places. And I, I never like to end these conversations because I feel like I could go on and on and on, but I know that our listeners have so much juiciness and yumminess already coming through. And so I just want to, from all parts of my heart, not just the bottom of it, just thank you so much for joining. I really celebrate all that you are and everything that you're doing, as you say, to help fast track healing and transformational modalities, allowing us to live with self-love, living more consciously and in a better health. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me today and sharing your yumminess with the world. Thank you, Simone. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having this podcast. Thank you for your amazing magic. Mm. and your talents and your gifts that you spread all the time and even on our platform all the time and uh, I love you I love you and I have one final question for you just before we end and that is what is your soulful sound to the world a self prayer or desire that you wish upon the world I wish everyone to to be able to have self-love. Mm. I think it's really, I really think that's what we're missing right now is, and it's the most important thing that um, we need to do, not just for ourselves, yes. but for our children, yes. the figure and for the universe. I, yeah. I actually really believe that the minute we really change the climate inside of us, and we balance ourselves out and that can only come through compassion Mm -hmm. and self-compassion and love and awareness. Um, When we do that truly and we can hold ourselves and love ourselves, which I guess I say it's really tough to do, that's when we're gonna make serious changes in the world. That's when we're gonna be able to really be able to handle climate change because you realize that you are a part of it. And, And there's nothing, every cell is connected to that. So this interconnectivity is, is amazing. So I just, I really, my my big soulful sound and prayer, yes. <laughs> my soulful message is um, like keep, keep going at trying to remember how important it is to have compassion and love for yourself and your whole being. Mm. Aho. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining Natalie Monk. I can't wait to speak with you again. Thanks again. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please feel free to share it with your friends and remember to subscribe. From my heart to yours, sending you love, healing, and sound wherever you are.